One of the most popular woodworking projects to make is a cutting board. Cutting boards are useful, they make great gifts, and they sell well at craft shows. Plus, they can be great skill building projects. There are a lot of different ways to design and make a wooden cutting board. At its most basic, a cutting board can literally be just a board. However, finding a board that's wide enough can be difficult and wider boards tend to twist or warp. A step up is a face grain cutting board made by gluing strips of wood together along their edges. A lot of bamboo cutting boards are made this way. The multiple strips will give the wood much more stability and are less likely to warp. A problem here is that the thickness of the cutting board is limited to the thickness of the boards you're using. An even better method is an edge grain cutting board made by gluing together the faces of the boards. The advantage here is that you can make thick, substantial chopping blocks. Chopping food on a thick, heavy cutting board is so much nicer than on a thin board. Edge grain boards are very stable, but they use a lot more wood than face grain cutting boards, which makes them more expensive. These three types of cutting boards are the most common that you'll find in stores because they're easy to make, they look nice, and they can be sold fairly inexpensively. But they all suffer from a couple of problems. They scratch easily, they can chip, and they can dull kitchen knives much faster than the best type of cutting board the end grain cutting board, which can last you a lifetime. As you probably already know, wood is made up of porous fibers that run the length of a board. It's how nutrients move up the trunk of a tree, and wood grain is very strong in that direction. Imagine these rods as the fibers of the wood. If you chop on them this way with a knife, they don't give or flex much. They'll scratch and they'll dull your knife blade. However, if you turn your board on its end, the wood fibers will spread and soften the impact on your knife. Wood is organic and the end grain is especially good at healing itself. Not only that, but studies have found that end grain cutting boards repel bacteria better than plastic or other materials. Watch out oil soaks into the end grain differently than on the face grain. Of course, end grain cutting boards are more challenging to make, but offer amazing opportunities for creative patterns and designs. They're a lot more expensive than any other kind of cutting board, but again, it'll last you a lifetime. And if you're interested in making and selling end grain cutting boards, you can easily begin selling them for $200. And depending on the size and the design, Design, you can sell it for a lot more. I made this end grain cutting board about five years ago and we use it almost every day. We do a lot of chopping. It's got a lot of small little surface scratches, but nothing deep. I think the best way to finish a cutting board and to keep it looking great is to apply a mineral oil finish. You can buy products specifically marketed for cutting board use called cutting board finish or something similar. But if you look at the label, they're just mineral oil sold at a much much higher price. A uh, much cheaper alternative is to simply buy a bottle of mineral oil at the supermarket or pharmacy. You could buy odorless mineral oil or just use baby oil, which is just mineral oil with some fragrance added. The scent is kind of pleasant and doesn't bother me and it's never transferred to food. Plus, all of these finishes are food safe. Plus, if you're selling cutting boards, this knowledge makes them more attractive to buyers, knowing that they won't have to buy anything special to maintain their boards. Oil is a maintenance finish, meaning it needs to be applied periodically to keep the wood in good condition and to prevent it from drying out or cracking. Most people recommend applying a coat of mineral oil at least once a month or so to your cutting board. Just pour some on and rub it in. That said, I'm horrible at maintaining a routine like that. And this is literally the first time I've oiled this board in over two years. My actual routine is pretty simple. Whenever I'm done chopping food on this board, I wash it off immediately with soap and water, dry it off, and I store it on its edge to dry. I don't recommend storing cutting boards flat. Don't soak your cutting board in water and never 
ever try to wash wood in a dishwasher. Also, most people advise against using cooking oils on your cutting board, such as vegetable oil or olive oil, because they might spoil or go rancid, causing unpleasant odors. I've never personally tried any cooking oils on a cutting board, so I can't really attest to whether that actually happens or not. If your cutting board starts to stink, most likely from onions, you can clean and deodorize it with vinegar or a mixture of vinegar and baking soda. After many years of cutting and chopping, your cutting board might start to develop an indentation in the middle. If this happens, or if you simply want to smooth out some of the surface scratches and freshen it up, you can sand it all down nice and smooth with a belt sander or a random orbit sander. 